Greetings and salutations. Welcome back to the van build series. Today, I believe, is day seven. Right, before I get started on today's video, I want to give out a couple of shout outs uh, to some very influential um, van builders that have given me some inspiration and uh, ideas on how to do this one. Now, the first one is a channel called Vandemonium. And uh, the fellow there, David, he's basically um, converting his own van for the very first time. But he did a lot of homework, particularly on the insulation front and um, with the with regard to the silver panels and everything. Um, so I'm very grateful to his uh, meticulous research um, and I pretty much copied what he did uh, in regards to the uh, insulation of this van. So thank you, David. Uh, I'm really enjoying your, uh, your series and I recommend everybody to pop over to David's channel. I will leave a link below in order to have a look at uh, his van build series as well. Now, my second shout out is to uh, a channel called The Restoration Couple. And uh, once again, lots of really great tips uh, and ideas um, as they're doing their own uh, van build. Uh, so once again, I'll leave a link below so you can go and visit their channel as well. And my third shout out is to a chap, uh, I think his name is Hugh. Um, the, uh, the channel is called Hugh Tube and he gave me quite a few good ideas, particularly around the electrics. He was the one that gave me the idea for the C-Tech. Um, uh, the ch split charge unit, I've never heard of them before and I'm so glad that I found his video um, on that particular uh, subject. Now I'm assuming his name is Hugh, as, it, as in the channel name is Hugh Tube, um, but there is a link to his channel below as well. Now cracking on with the van, I've done a day's work uh, since uh, making the last video and as you can see the walls are now up and the switch panels are in place. Um, once again, thanks to everyone for all your tips and ideas um, in, in regard to all of this. I know some of you are concerned that I have electrics um, right next to the shower um, area. Uh, no need to worry, it's all going to be waterproofed. And to be honest, uh, the water shouldn't actually go anywhere near there because this area here um, is where the showers are taking place. And I'm also going to be using a shower curtain um, or I'm, I'm intending to install the shower curtain just so that when I do have a shower it's not going to splash all over the toilet because um, that just could be you know not much fun. Now as you can see I've got all of the electrics in place now. I have the uh, 240 volt mains RCD unit uh, which leads to the outlet plug. Uh, I now have the CTEC in place. I was intending to connect those really thick cables yesterday. Unfortunately, my uh, lug crimping tool is just not up to the job. I have this ratchet crimping tool for electrical um, uh, things and I don't have the correct dies on it. So when I went to crimp these really heavy duty lugs that I've got to go on these, uh, these terminals, um, it wouldn't even dent it. Uh, so I've got a new one ordered. It should be arriving today and it's got these huge great handles on it. It's about, I think they're about a foot long. So I can exert the necessary pressure on the lugs in order to crimp them correctly and safely. So as you can see, all of the, the main wires are all kind of stuffed into here. So they're gonna be out of sight. I can always access them uh, from here I can simply take this panel off and I've made the panel wires long enough so that if at any point I want to have overhead cupboards that go up to here I can simply pull the panel out and transfer it to the front of the overhead cupboards so I've sort of thought a little bit in advance with that although for the moment I'm going to be happy with this arrangement also another bit of good news we had rain overnight as you can see lots of water on top of the uh, roof light but thankfully the floor was bone dry and there are absolutely no signs whatsoever of any kind of leakage so of course I'm very very happy about that. Okay so the plan for today is uh, I'm going to uh, build the back wall to the bathroom so that means I need to put probably about three spars going across and then I'm going to start to clad the bathroom with the plastic um, wall coverings that I've got which are supposed to be waterproof and uh, that's going to go all the way around. Now I will leave this wall till last because I'm still waiting for those parts to arrive. Um, now I, I should be able to uh, 
get access from in here if I need to uh, to the various things but it would be a little bit easier if I still leave this area open for the time being um, until I've completely done the wiring also because I haven't connected the batteries up yet uh, I don't know if any of this works it all works in theory in my head I sort of mapped it all out in my head as I did it so it should all work there's no reason why none of this should work um, but it would be nice to test it all out before uh, I start covering things up. So I'm going to make a start on that and I will come back to you when I've made a little bit of progress. Right, it's about halfway through the day, 29 degrees at the moment, so it's really, really hot. I'm probably looking a bit sweaty and horrible. Um, right, I've done as much as I possibly can at the moment um, in the back end of the van. Now I was going to clad it, but I decided just to be on the safe side, I'm going to wait until I've got the wiring completed uh, before I clad it over. I, I figured it's only going to take a few hours to get the cladding all done, um, but I think it would be safest if I wait um, until all the wiring's done. I'm just literally waiting on the crimping tool to arrive. Um, so I can get the main lugs put onto the really thick wires. Once that's arrived, I can then get on, get the wiring done and uh, then get that all sorted out. Um, but uh, yeah, I've done quite a few bits, even though it doesn't look like it. Um, I basically, I've plumbed in the toilet now. Obviously I've put the, the back spars on the wall. Um, I plumbed in the water and the electric to the loo. Um, I've got some more electrics on this side now. And I've also plumbed in part of the plumbing. This is the main water motor, which I'm going to be using. Uh, this works on a pressure system. It's got a pressure switch inside it. So what happens is this goes into the water reservoir, which I've also made a decision about, which I'll tell you in a minute. Um, so this goes into the reservoir and then it feeds off to, I've got three outlets. I've got one that's going to go up to the main sink tap. I've got one that goes off to the loo, and then I've got another one that goes up to this tap up here. Uh, which I now glued into place and this tap will be used to fill uh, this reservoir for the shower. Now for the water reservoir, what I've done is I've ordered two 30 litre jerry cans. Not only are they the perfect shape to fit in here because I can, I can have a jerry can sort of going that way and then I can store a second one in the back. So I can still carry 60 litres of water with me, but changing the water over shouldn't be an issue. It also frees up space. So if I've got a jerry can sat there, uh, quite happily behind a cupboard, I've got room for the fridge, which I can put here, and then I've got plenty of room for the gas bottles. And there may be even a little bit of extra room for some cupboard space as well, uh, which should be good because at the moment I've got no real cupboards apart from this little cubby hole here. Um, but I'm hoping the cupboard space will be taken up um, with a small amount of overhead uh, space up there. and overhead there and of course beneath the bed so I can't progress anymore with this at the moment I've done all I can so now I can turn my attention to the building the seat box now originally I was going to build like a, an l-shaped corner thing a bit like Damon had in Nina the ambulance camper but when I discovered how much it was going to cost to have the cushions made I had a little change of plan and uh, I decided to get some second-hand uh, caravan ones and they are here uh, so what we've got here is um, that there is an extra bit. I just didn't bring that out. Um, but what we've got here is a six foot camper van uh, cushion and that will make up into a three foot wide bed. So I can pull that out. That goes like that. And that gives me a, a three foot, oops, three foot bed, which is exactly what I need. And I'm going to have with, with the kitchen unit only being this wide, I'm going to have at least a, a foot wide aisle that I can walk down and when the bed's made up I've still got access to the bathroom I can get the door open um, so it's hopefully all going to work out beautifully so what I've got to do now is make the seat box so I'm going to get on with that right now okay it's a couple of hours later and it's done well sort of done um, it's just the right height. That was the one thing that I wanted to get absolutely right. And I did that by measuring or well, putting this on the seat box in my other van. And it was a little bit too high. So I've made sure that the absolute maximum height of the wood was only 16 inches. However, I have miscalculated somehow. If you look at the, the front here, I mean, it's still OK. But for some reason, um, th this is further back than it needs to be. Um, but I can rectify that simply by 
just pulling it out a little bit so it's not it's not a problem uh, but quite how I ended up with that I have no idea but I obviously obviously did it wrong somehow but it's absolutely fine it's pretty sturdy and it folds out into the three foot bed you just pull up pull on it like so and there we have ourselves a bed perfect so it is a very very basic design uh, all made out of uh, stud wood and uh, all we've got is two halves that just basically uh, pull out and uh, all I've done is at the front of these I've just chamfered all of the corners and then at the backs on here I've also chamfered the corners um, and it just goes together really really smoothly so just like that so I'm really really pleased with that um, my other one in the other van it's a little bit awkward because I, I had to build it around the wheel arch boxes and there's all sorts of uh, shapes underneath it so it's a little bit awkward to open and close this one dead smooth really really happy with it um, and then I've just got these uh, legs uh, that are measured at the right height all the way around um, and because this is the really thick stud wood um, I don't really need to have um, horizontals on the ground uh, so that gives me a little bit more storage space underneath um, I'm going to figure out some sort of fascia boards and some sort of access um, I'm just basically thinking doors in like so and then maybe a fascia board on the side um, I'm not sure yet I can think about the detail of that a little bit later on but the basic structure is there that's all I was interested in doing so the crimping tool has now arrived so I can get on with uh, doing the wiring hopefully I'll get all that finished tonight and then tomorrow I can concentrate on cladding out the bathroom uh, assuming all of the electrical stuff is going to work okay I can test most of it out tonight uh, which should be really good so wish me luck I'm going to end this video here and I will carry on in episode or day eight uh, coming very very soon so until then thanks for watching have a great rest of the day and I'll see you in the next video till then take care